it's Gil McNeil, Birkeland Gardens. Uh, thanks for joining me today on a sunny July, mid-July afternoon or morning actually. So we're just standing by a little display garden that we set up over the last year. We built this uh, retaining wall planter when I was a landscape contractor. My boys and I, we uh, uh, used to build a lot of these, so a lot of hardscape materials. So in that we have some really good soil and then I took a selection of plants and uh, put them in the bed and then this ledge always collects a, a lot of plants so these kind of move in and out and and I cleaned it off a while back but now I've got a whole collection of plants sitting on the ledge again so I'm just gonna go through a few of those and everything's doing really well in in the bed this gets water irrigation um, and the soil is really good and a lot of these are in containers buried in soil um, and mulch but they're just really thriving in here a little bit of fertilizer as well I've used a time release uh, granular fertilizer in there and occasionally I'll hit it with a foliar like uh, uh, type fertilizer as well it doesn't last as long but it, it's another little boost so kind of moving along we've got um, you know just a selection of uh, Japanese white pines here that we've talked about Fouquet before this is a nice unusual one that um, like the bonsai people like this it's got a little bit of movement to it and it's got a variegated needle um, really really nice so in the bed um, I've got a very large cedrus cedar deodora down here um, it only grows about an inch a year so this one is minimum of 20 years old and then I'm making an estimate but uh, it is really you know the bark is, is thick it shows the aged bark look, nice needles, the flat look. This particular cultivar is called Kater, and it's much like the hedgehog. Uh, they're very similar, uh, hedgehog cedrus labani. So I've got, we're kind of moved to one end of the bed, and I've got a, a ginkgo biloba. I'll pick it up so you can see it. it it's um, just called a weeping ginkgo on this one here. We have a uh, Quite a few different varieties cultivars in at the nursery here different dwarfs and miniatures and that but um, i'm always fascinated by ginkgos the leaves are very unusual and um, they're a deciduous plant but um, there's upright ones and weeping ones and ones that have white variegation in it so they're a plant that originates in asia and i think china so that's really a nice plant we've got a nice little hedge here that um, came as just a unit and we can sell those from time to time but if people want ready-made hedges they come already clipped this one needs a little bit of printing but it uh, you know come they come ready to put into the ground and then we've been selling quite a few Japanese maples lately um, I've got some different red ones um, this one here it's a form it's a nice more a little more uh, compact columnar uh, red one uh, Twombly's Red Sentinel, so it's like the blood good maple, but more more columnar. Moving a little farther along in the bed, we've got a uh, giant sequoia here, um, and uh, it's uh, I think it's a seedling. It's got a little bit of unusual variegation, and I will get a, a close up shot of it too, and you can kind of see it. It's not uh, it's hard to see unless you get up close to it, but it does have some white variegation in it. And then in the bed again, I've just got a variety of different things, and we'll get some shots of that. Uh, I've got a meta sequoia. Um, I've got this fir. This is an alpine fir. Different pines. Cedrus. Um, divinely blue is in here. A few spruces. A nice blue one that's a flat one. Some hinoki, golden hinoki cypress. Grasses. A Lawson cypress, a cultivar that's a nice blue one. So I've got a, a grass here that I really like. It's deciduous grass, so it, it, I cut it back in the in the winter time. But it's uh, I pronounce it Hakanaloa, and this one is Aria. So it's the gold version. There's two gold versions of this one. But I just love this grass. The height is about a foot tall. Lays over a little bit. It's um, uh, a nice accent plant in the garden and I use it in my own home, home as well and then there's a grouping of daylilies right behind me here too um, mostly these are the repeat blooming yellow ones I've got a red one that's that's thrown in there and um, so these were just small little divisions that I put in here now they're 
getting good size and they're blooming a little bit late plus it's a little bit shady in here and with the shade um, we also I've got a number of my hostas sitting in this area as well and they do uh, really well a lot of slug damage and snail damage this year that's what the little holes are um, I, I do um, try to control those the best I can but sometimes you just live with a little bit of that um, but I love hostas and look my customer been buying um, quite a few lately this is a nice one with different variegation in it um, this this one here is called Lakeside Banana Bay and then there's just other blue varieties and other variegated ones so uh, in my hand is a little seedling Japanese snowbell that's Styrex japonica and one of my favorite little flowering shade trees so they have a small leaf and they just get hundreds literally thousands of tiny bell-shaped flowers hanging pendulous on off the branches and they're very fragrant and so this is sealing off of one of mine and I've, I've grown a few of them and uh, it's doing quite nicely for a, a one-year-old seedling so it gets lots of water here and did a little bit of fertilizing so great addition kind of a medium small to medium size um, tree in the in the gardens and changing in a little bit on what we've been talking about I've got a, a lavender here I've been selling a little bit of that and uh, my neighbor who's a, a wholesale grower down the street uh, I pick up some of his plants to have here at the nursery and he's got three different types of uh, lavender this particular one only grows about 80 to 18 inches tall so that's a, a nice uh, height where it doesn't like fall over in the wind and the rain and that and um, it's getting ready to bloom right now getting lots of blooms on it one of the things about lavender I found out over the years is um, after it's done blooming and definitely before winter at some point um, cut this lavender back and then it'll flush out with nice new growth next year and and I've seen it so often where people just leave it and you get this brown kind of ugly stock and uh, for the next year and then the blooms come on top of that but it just it doesn't look particularly attractive so um, cutting your lavender back at the end of the season is something you should do so looking at a uh, one other plant before we move on is another um, a miniature spruce JB Broom on a standard so um, just a little miniature uh, spruce a cute little plant so a couple other alpine firs um, different shades different cultivars nice blue and then a green green color and then a cypress that's called cannonball very slow grower this is an older one here's a here's a one that's just a you know a few years old probably three four years old and uh, comes out kind of yellowish and then a lot of times they'll turn as they grow they'll, they'll get a little bit of white tint as the variegation as well so and one other plant before and here is a uh, Alaska cedar um, and we used to call this a camisiparis uh, now they're it changed to cupressus and new contentus. this particular one was discovered or brought to the trade by um, Jim Boyko and it's named after him Boyko's Sunlight I believe is what they call it it may not be a registered name but nice nice gold color and the green is really interesting on it nice variegated color these are they just naturally weep down I don't know the habit on this one it looks like it's going to be uh, grow up and then everything weep down there are some very narrow uh, cultivars of Alaska weeping cedar as well. So that kind of shows our our bed here for today. So I hope you enjoyed the little tour of our display garden. Um, it's just a beautiful day here, uh, shady morning. We're expecting a uh, a warm day today, but it's very comfortable right now. And you know the shade from the oak tree here is providing uh, you know the shade that we're standing in right now. So I appreciate you joining me. Uh, today and again I hope you like the video and I hope you do like comment or subscribe to our channel thanks see you soon